So let's go finish Hospital World, shall we? Back in the hole. And another cutscene. something down there. Okay. I'll do it. You're the only chance I've got. I'll stick with you. Okay, so apparently Eileen can't even see the hole. So, I guess from her point of view, we just David Blamed our way through the wall. But the important thing is, it's time to wrap up Hospital World, and that means the most hilarious part of the game. We've used the small key. And you know, just to keep her out of the way, I'm going to de-equip Eileen. Seriously? I don't know if they thought they were being creepy, but it's just funny. Now, the enemies generally will not go after Eileen. Make sure everybody's done here. Ooh, triple stump. Efficient. From this point on, health items are very important. This is why I didn't want to use any during the first half of the game. The apartment no longer will heal me. Ever downward. Well, I guess down we go. And into this spiral staircase. You have to kind of go slowly, otherwise you leave Eileen behind. Which in rare circumstances can actually be a good thing, but not here. And we've got this little branching path here that leads to... The riskiest hole yet. Yeah. 
I don't know either, Eileen. But what I do know is we're going to risk going through that hole. Doesn't seem like the safest idea, but it still takes us back to the apartment. Okay. Yeah, from this point on, you want to immediately get away from the bed, just in case. Hmm. Aha! We have our first haunting. Notice the footsteps there and the lack of our shoes near the door. If we get close to it, this is actually going to hurt us. Some hauntings hurt more than others, so as a precaution, I'm going to take a quick save here, actually. It would be embarrassing to go through all that and then get killed by slippers. Return from below hospital world. Sure, sounds good. And be back in just a moment. Oh, hi, bloody footprint. Huh, huh. That's something strange in the neighborhood. Let's see here. No answer, just like I thought. Well, blast. It's something weird, and it don't look good, but uh, we're going to have to take care of it ourselves. This is where the anti-spirit items come into play. Mostly holy candles, but also, saint medallions can work for this purpose, too. We'll talk about them a little more later. Okay, we want that holy candle. To clear a haunting, you need to get into its area of effect, set the candle, and then back off. Let's see, I guess we actually have to be near the shoes themselves. There they are. I'm getting a very bad feeling all over. The bad feeling is getting weaker. It must be this candle. So, after you've lit the candle, just back off, let the candle burn out, and the haunting should recede. The footprints are disappeared, and the shoes are back where they're supposed to be. Haunting cleared. So, some things to note about hauntings. Remember back when we were talking about Eileen, and I said that her health, it has something to do with determining what ending you get. So too do the hauntings. They're the second thing that affected. To get one of the better endings, you need to clear at least 80% of the hauntings that occur in your apartment over the course of the game. So, we've cleared one so far. Also notable about hauntings, after enough time, they'll go out on their own. But, this does not count as clearing the haunting. You have to be proactive about ending them. Now, what I said about Saint Medallions, they will work too for clearing a haunting. If you want to use one of those, all you have to do is equip it, walk into the area of effect, and over time, the haunting will clear. And the only problem is, it does start to break the Saint Medallion. Now, Saint Medallions and Holy Candles can also be used in the Nightmare Worlds, but it's more practical to use uh, Saint Medallions there. They will dull the effects of the pain auras from things like ghost victims and wheelchairs. The Holy Candle, the purpose of using it in the other worlds, is actually, I've read, it can heal Eileen if she's taken too much damage. But it's kind of a glitchy thing, not all that reliable. Basically, there's only one area that you can really use it in, that you can rely on it, and even then, it requires some pretty tricky timing from what I've read. 
So better to save the candles for the apartment, and if you absolutely need some anti-spirit effects to deal with some of the ghost victims in the other worlds, use Saint Medallions there. But as many hauntings as you have to clear for a good ending, I personally tend to save both for the apartment, really. It's all about just finding the balance of how you want to do things. So with that, I think that's where we're going to call it. Do another quick save here. Now that we've been spared the wrath of the penny loafers. And so with that, thank you very much for watching. I hope you're enjoying the series so far, and I shall see you again next time. Until then, fare thee well. One thing about hauntings that I actually forgot to cover, so I'll talk about it here. From here on, the radio in your apartment actually serves the same kind of purpose that it did in the previous games. If you turn on the radio and hear static from this point on, it means there's a haunting in your apartment. If you turn on the radio and it's completely silent, your apartment is clean. And hey, as long as we're here, let's see how fast these things kill us. Whoa, yeah, look how quickly our health went down. These things don't mess around, man. <laughs> Death by footwear. Amelda Marcos is here to kill us all.